And it's that. It's not state action that solves problems. The state is not your mother or father. You're not a child. The state doesn't know. And in Brazil, I make the joke, the best example of this in one word is Brasilia. O Canal Brasil recebe a economista Deirdre Maklauski. Ela é americana, está passando uma semana no Brasil, foi professora dos Chicago Boys, teve vários encontros aqui no Brasil com empresas, eventos, seminários, participou de várias uh, palestras e, claro, reservou um tempinho para conversar com a gente aqui no Brasil. E eu já começo agradecendo. Thank you very much for your time with us. I'm extremely glad to be. I'm always glad to be in in, in Brazil. That's good to know. And the food's good and the people are better. Uh, good to know. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, you spent these uh, days in Brazil, and we know that uh, you always say that that you don't uh, follow uh, what what happens in Brazil not, all day, not, no. but. Uh, What what uh, what vision do you have from Brazil now after these days that you spent here and the, all the talks that you had? Well, I, I would hope that uh, Bolsonaro would lighten up on the cultural side, on the on the uh, on the side of. I, I wish he would be a consistent liberal. I don't think he is. I think basically he's a conservative. So his economic policies, some of them seem okay to me. Fine deregulate, allow the vitality of the Brazilians to come through. But then he says nasty things about homosexuals and and wants to support the church and all that kind of stuff, and I don't like that. Two years ago when we uh, when you were here, you said that the Brazil was facing a, a good opportunity to have a liberal agenda. That's right. With democracy. I know. And That's after right. two years, What you followed, uh, you think, are we, are we doing a, a good job? You still have a free press, as we can tell right now. But unfortunately, uh, Bolsonaro, whose name, by the way, contains Bolsa, as in Bolsa Familia, but he, he's, he's modeled himself after Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, of course, is part of this worldwide wave of populism, right wing or left wing, it doesn't much matter. And I really worry about that. I think Brazilian democracy is strong enough to handle it. But you know, you've had, you, you've had military dictatorships here. So I'm, I, I, I'll pray for you as an Anglican. So let's talk about liberalism. Yeah, yeah. We, we're just we're new on that, uh, with the agenda, with the speech, with the debate, yeah. and uh, a lot of people are asking, what is to be a liberal? What is that? It's very simple. It's it's the the program of making everyone have permission, everyone to be free, no one to be a slave not a wife to her husband, not a slave to his master, not an ordinary citizen to, to the state. So it, you know, it's, it's, only, it's only, only two centuries ago that anyone thought this was a good idea. Before that, we had hierarchies, conservative hierarchies. So it's against hierarchy, this ranking of people And it's in, in, in favor of equal. As I say, the, the, the word I like best is permission. Because opportunity sounds like you need to subsidize people, and I don't think you do. I think you need to let people go into occupations they want, let people open a fruit stand on the street without being hassled by the police, let people move from the Northeast if they want to, as they can in Brazil, that sort of thing allow people to have their lives. And that has been the great machine of prosperity in the last two centuries. The countries that have been liberal 
even even a little bit like the Chinese communists in their economy, they're liberal, not in their politics. And the result has been amazing. Up they go. So that's that's what caused the modern enrichment. I call it the great enrichment. And I want it for for Brazil. People are mixing the concepts uh, between liberalism and uh, to be a conservative. I know. Here in Brazil, I know. This is the speech. That's I'm, a, a, I'm a liberal in the economy, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, Chinese, yeah, and I'm a conservative. Yeah, and that, that's and, no good. Liberty is liberty is liberty. If you don't think that transgendered people should be able to be transgendered, or you don't think that the newspapers should be allowed to say what they want, then you're not really a, a, an enthusiast for freedom, for, for, for liberty. There, there's, it's strange because in the, in the Western Hemisphere, the word liberal has this very strange history. In your, in your country and in Latin America generally, it is conservative. In my country, it's left wing and has been for about 100 years. So social, social Democrats, like Bernie Sanders in the United States, are called liberal. No, they're not. They want people to be free as gays or, or women or whatever, but they don't want the, them to be free in the economy. And I think liberty is liberty is liberty. And, and how, how to manage or how to balance uh, the, the liberalism itself with challenges that we have in Brazil, for instance, the poverty? The best welfare program for poor people is economic growth. China under Mao, $1 a day, $2 a day. Now its income per head is about the same as in Brazil. And indeed in Brazil, in 1800, one or $2 a day per person in modern prices, you know. And now it's about $33 a day. Letting people work, letting people do things, try out things, that's the formula. Where I'm, I, uh, I have a book that's coming out next fall with that kind of summarizes it. It's called Leave Me Alone and I'll Make You Rich. And what's it about? What is, what is that it's about? about Liberalism. It's, it's in fact a, a summary, a kind of popular summary of a trilogy I did on economic history, sh showing this to be true. Showing this that, showing that what made for the modern world was liberty. Because as I emphasize, it was new in the 1700s, in Northwestern Europe only, and then spread to the world. And it's that, it's not state action that solves problems. The state is not your mother or father. You're not a child. The state doesn't know. And in Brazil, I make the joke, that the best example of this in one word is Brasilia. <laughs> you know, I'm from Brasilia, but I, I, but I get what, what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> And I, I kind of agree with you. Most, so, most Brazilians do. Uh, but talking about poverty, you know, every time we talk about inequality and yeah. poverty, yeah, uh, there's this um, sensibility involved on it. Because, look. yeah, because we, we look to uh, poor people and uh, we say, wow, we need to do something for them. Because but. there's the, 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 the door of the opportunity, which is closed. Uh, most of the time in, in, in countries like Brazil. So how to... Um, um. It's closed not by capitalism. It's not liberal capitalism that closes it. It's the state. For example, the, the minimum wage, not the Bolsa Familia, which I'm in favor of, but, 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 but minimum wages and obstacles to joining uh, unions or joining certain occupations. In my own, I speak of my own country. My own country to become a hairdresser, which I desperately need, you have to go to school and get a license and it's a state license and so on. That's crazy. 
uh, that, that should be an open opportunity for poor people or, or rich people for that matter. And so it's, it turns out that many of the reasons that poor people are still poor, most of them actually are coming from the state. If, if the state supports monopolies, for example, as it often does, that raises the price of gasoline or something and ordinary people are hurt. So that's one point. But the other point is I'm a Christian uh, I'm liberal. I'm, as I said, I'm an Anglican. And I, I believe I have an obligation to uh, poor people. And I, I, I give money to my church, which gives it to poor people. And so I'm, I'm taking responsibility for it. But it's not handouts to the poor that the poor need. It's work. I don't mean slave work. I mean work that they can uh, advance in. And that's what a vibrant economy provides. And the country, here's the country. Look, I love Brazil. I don't know it very well. I don't speak Portuguese. I'm stupid. But I also love another country in the Southern Hemisphere, South Africa. Both of you have antique economic policies where you think that investment is what makes people rich. No, it doesn't. What makes people rich is new ideas. India and China, instead of growing at 2%, 3%, they're growing at 6 to 12% per year. That's what you want. You want to adopt the liberalism of India since 1991 and China, at least in the economy, since 1971. So uh, how can we uh, uh, do this uh, transition? Because here we have uh, antique policies. Yeah. And uh, we have this, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like a culture yeah, it is. that we need uh, the state. And yeah. we kind of want the state I know. To, to make decisions, I not know. to be, not, not, not to take care of us, but I, to make decisions. But, but that's and, the and, and how is the transition, that, the transition problem, uh, what, what, process? What, what I have to persuade people and you and people who want to help this situation is to persuade people to want to be adults, want to be grown ups. Because um, statism, if you call it that, is the theory that everyone's a child and mama and papa state are to take care of them. And, you know, to take an example, Argentina, since Juan, Juan Perón has been like this. And it's a disaster for Argentina. And it's not very good for your country or mine to have this dependence. What we got to do is get people to want to be adults. And that doesn't mean, oh, go, you're poor, I don't care, I'm not going to help you. No, no. Help people. Really help them. And the best way, they're the, as I said, I like the Bolsa Familia. By the way, Bolsonaro's name contains Bolsa. Yeah, the, he's not the one that created it. I know he did. Lula, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I understand yeah. that. But they're actually, enemies, actually. But actually, he's increased it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's a good thing. But anyway, I'm in favor of the Bolsa Familia for poor people, not for people like me. Of course. Um, but uh, I want real help, not just to signal how virtuous I am by loving poor people so I give them subsidies. No, no. I, well, let's take an, another example. Trade, foreign trade protection. Yeah, which you is know, a, Brazil is one of the most closed countries. In, me, yeah. But, but uh, uh, Trump, has, open market, uh, uh, Trump has done the same thing. He's, you know, these stupid trade wars that he has with China, which, by the way, has been very good for Brazilian soybeans. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Until 15 January. We'll see, we'll see. With, the new, with the new agreement. Don't count it out, because once people have moved, it's hard to move back. But, so... What protection does is subsidizes or protects one group of people at the expense of everyone else. Because it's free trade that makes prices low, makes people uh, have access to Chinese hammers and, and French wine and so forth. Um, whereas uh, it, it's, it's very unfair. It's very unequal to have 
protection for various things. You have companies that comp can compete in the world market. Your airplane company, the ones that's so Ibrahim. good, they're so, it's such a good company. And the, there's nothing wrong with the Brazilians, they can do it. And that's what you should be doing. And then you'll do what you're good at, and you'll get, allow other people to do what they're good at. And that's what you do in your house. That's what you do in your home. When your husband, your husband gets to take out the garbage, damn right, he should. And you specialize in something else, that's good. We started a process here in Brazil uh, to manage this uh, state of ours. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like with the fiscal reforms. And yeah, we, have okay. a, we have a, 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 a big agenda with yeah. new reforms because we need to uh, continue adjusting uh, the fiscal policy and the cost of our yeah, state, yeah. which is very high. Um, and uh, beside that, we have this uh, debate about the tools the tools that we need to have since the state will be minor, will be less relevant for the economy. Uh -huh. And the debate in Brazil is that uh, the, the, the match uh, tool is uh, education. What do you think about that? Because we lack of our good ed education in Brazil. And since the state is not going to be there anymore, so if we need even poor people to make the right decisions and to have the liberty to decide and have new ideas. I think poor people are capable of taking care of themselves. Poor people ha know where the good jobs are. But what is the role of, of the education in this process? Depends on what level of education you're talking about. I think the you basic. and I, I think you and I should be taxed to pay for elementary education. I don't think the state should provide it. Just because we pay for it doesn't mean that the teachers should be state employees. But I think the state should inspect it to make sure you haven't set up, I don't know, madrasas and bad education. But that's the only role of the state that I, I would think would be smart. But I, I, the, the education is used as an excuse in South Africa, and I think it's true here too. In South Africa, they have a high minimum wage. Why is that? Because they're very, there are a lot of poor people in South Africa. Well, that's to protect the trade unions. The Congress of South African Trade Unions demanded it. And they played an honorable role in the fight against apartheid, and so the government indulges them. And then what nice people like me and you say, well, okay, let's keep the high minimum wage but educate the people better so that they're worth the high minimum wage. That's back to front. That's upside down. What you do is you let people go. You, I don't mean go to the wall or die, but you allow them to uh, start a business easily. It's easier to start a business in China than in Brazil. Yeah, we know. Now, how's that for a smart idea? And we're not talking about the tax system in Brazil, no, no, which no, no, is no. one it's, of the worst in, in the world. I know that's bad, but, but yeah. you, you, the, the bureaucracy, it takes hundreds of days to start a little business. And then you can't fire people. This is true in South Africa, too. Yeah. So you're crazy. If you're a small business person, you're we, we out don't of have your mind. To, we don't have tools to manage uh, the economy uh, in, his, in, in its cycles. We don't have tools to do that. The, to, you know, the whole tool talk and managing the economy. I want people to stop thinking that way. Now, when I was young, I believed it. I was a Marxist first, and then I learned to be an economist. I was kind of an economic engineer. This is back in the 60s. And I thought, yes, we Harvard students, we're going to go down to Washington and fine-tune the economy. We're going to run your life. You know, I was a kid. Um, it's, and it didn't work very well, and it's not a good idea. The state doesn't know. The state is not your wise parent. You are not a child. Let adults make their own decisions. And on the whole, poor people, whether they have a high school degree or certainly a college degree or not, are perfectly capable of taking care of themselves in the sense of 
choosing professions, they want to be electricians, they become electricians. And, 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 and how to grow? How to grow like That's, that? Because uh, we're talking about psychology and, and anthropology and sociology. Uh, there's this uh, whole kind of a But that grows. Thinking. It grows. Look, when I was a young economist. But what is the, what is the, the key that? Uh, the key is letting people alone. And this is what's happened in China. It, it comes with the with the state uh, with the government speech, like we're going out. Yep, and that's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened in China in 1978, and happened in India in 1991. I didn't. They didn't walk away from the country. They didn't go to to, to Switzerland. Although I wish some of them had, but they 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 stopped micromanaging the economy. Now under Mao or under, under the Gandhis and, uh, and Nehru, the whole idea was socialism. The whole idea was, ah, oh, we wise people in Beijing or, or Delhi, we're gonna, tell, we're gonna have five-year plans, and we're gonna do it, we're gonna invest. We all thought investment was the way of the future. Investment is not the point. Ideas are the point. Smart, new ideas. That camera, uh, 30 years ago, that camera would be this size. Now it's tiny, and it'll get even smaller, and it does the, the job it's doing even better than it does. That comes from some person thinking about it, and it doesn't have to be fancy stuff like cameras. It can be deciding to set up a hairdressing salon in the neighborhood. And if the local government is preventing that, as they commonly are, uh, the poor people are made worse off. So, so let the people do it. Because I'm an economic historian, and I've, I've, I've studied why we're rich. And I finally came to the conclusion that it's not because of investment. It's not because of exploit, exploitation. It's not what the right says. It's not what the left says. It's letting ordinary people have a go, as the English say. And if you let them, they say, oh boy, I can have a go. Oh, let's see, I wonder if I can do a new way of hairdressing, or I wonder if I can make coffee better, or remember I can improve the lighting. They, they go crazy, and that's what happened after 1800. What about the, the, the stability of the, the economy? Because we are new on that, too. Yeah. We, 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 our currency has uh, 25 years. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we, we have uh, these uh, interest rates lower. We never thought we could have a four or five. Well, be, because uh, you've stopped having inflation. Yeah. Uh, this, is the, this is the better uh, uh, environment to, to get free of the state. It, it's, a, it's a condition. It's, you're, a, it's a precondition, a precondition to. You're asking now about macroeconomic policy. And so far, I've been talking about microeconomic policy, how markets work, little markets. Now you're asking about things like inflation, uh, the, 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 the national debt, uh, the, the size of the surplus, blah, blah, blah. And the, what's happened since the 1930s all over the West, including Brazil, is that we've become obsessed with attempting to smooth out the business cycle. And that would be easy if economists knew what caused the business cycle. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that they don't. And if an economist comes to you and says, oh, yeah, I know what causes. It's, it's, a, it's real business cycles, or it's the money supply, or it's blah, 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 that's baloney. That's nonsense. They don't know. We don't know. And if you don't know where a car is going, it's crazy to try to steer it. If it's just randomly going here, look, I think the business cycle is caused by, by psychological cycles of, of enthusiasm and, and pessimism. And I can make a fairly good historical case that that's so. But then there's nothing you can do about it. And, and I don't, the, the problem is we were, we were traumatized by the Great Depression of the 1930s and then many of us have been re-traumatized by 2008. 
And we got to let this idea that people in your hometown in Brasilia or in Washington, where I'm going to be on Sunday, know what they're doing. We've got to, got to get rid of that idea. They don't know. Believe me. In fact, I once wrote a book called... It's scary. I know it is. It? <laughs> if, because it's like being an, an adult. Being yeah. an adult is scary. If, if you have your mom and papa, then you don't have to be frightened. But I once wrote a book called If You're So Smart. Um, it hasn't been translated into Portuguese, but into Spanish. And my point was that if, if the people in Brasilia and Washington knew what they were doing, they wouldn't go to Brasilia and Washington to run the economy. They'd go get rich. Wouldn't you? If you knew when the business cycle was turning, you could make an unlimited fortune by a Caribbean island. You know, come on. So if it, the, the idea that people can steer the economy is a basically foolish one. Uh, we, we just had uh, the, the meeting in Davos, the yeah, World yeah. Economic Forum, yeah, and yeah. they're trying to change the narrative. Like yeah, yeah. the green capitalism, or yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, nice. the fight uh, uh, nice. against inequality and yeah, policy oh, and yeah, capitalism, yeah, yeah. and that. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I, I think I'm 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 worried about global warming, and I think there are a bunch of sensible things we can do. Uh, my, my favorite example is Margaret Thatcher and the ozone hole. The ozone hole was caused in part by hairspray. Margaret Thatcher, the conservative. Prime Minister of Britain was a very big user of hairspray. Yeah, with that hair. It was the big hair, the big <laughs> like the a big, helmet. Big hair, like a helmet, and she led the charge to make up sensible policies to get rid of air conditioning fluid, which was the main problem, and hairspray that worked by the stuff that causes the whole. There are there are sensible things we can do. I do not believe, as many people in, in, in Davos who I heard, um, and lots of people think it's an existential crisis and that we're doomed. I do not believe that. I think that's wrong and, and dangerous. Is there uh, a shame there? Like There's a shame of the, of the rich beans. countries that are producing a lot of the carbon, um, um, and they're ashamed, but they're saying, oh, I mean, <laughs> here's, here's a good example, the Germans want to get rid of carbon uh, fuels. Next door are the French. The French have safe, cheap, atomic energy. But the Germans are terrified of atomic energy because they're, they're left wing, they, they, at least a lot of them are, the Green Party and so forth. So they're going to destroy their carbon economy and try to replace it with what? Windmills. I don't know what they're going to do. Instead of doing the sensible thing, which is restart atomic energy, they're closing down atomic reactors in Germany. This is local. This is insane. Um, and so it's the hysteria. The, uh, uh, oh, the world is coming to an end, blah, blah, blah. And as far as um, uh, inequality is concerned, this is a constant cliche about my country and yours is that they're terribly unequal. Let's not get inequality confused with poverty. We know how to fix poverty, at least I think I do, which is to leave people alone to invent stuff, organizational things, like containerization. It didn't involve any um, technical change. Just said, now let's see, let's make a steel box standardized and send it off to China. That's an organizational change. So those kinds of things, that's what makes us um, well off. And it raises the poor people. Now, you say, oh, but that's not true. The rich are getting richer. The poor are getting poorer. That's not true. Inequality in the world is falling. If you do it correctly, the extremely poor people in the world are going, are going up the scale to being just poor, not extremely poor. And the poor are getting into the middle class. And the middle class are getting into the upper middle class. That's what's actually happening worldwide. 
there are two kinds of inequality. One is the good kind. You think of uh, uh, containerization. Your name is uh, Malcolm, um, Malcolm McLean, 1956 in, in uh, North Carolina. You say, hmm, that's a good idea. That's the good kind. And Malcolm McLean, I take it, made a lot of money. So did Walt Disney make a lot of money by thinking up Mickey Mouse. Good for Walt. We're better off. We pay voluntarily for Mickey Mouse. Walt and his uh, children become very rich. That's the good kind. Because it means that both the customers are, well, the customers are getting better off, and the inventor, the entrepreneur, makes money, and then that attracts entry. It attracts other entrepreneurs. So you get Bugs Bunny on top of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and, and, and you get air freight as well as, as shipping freight. So that, that, that's the good kind. The bad kind is stealing. Corruption. Corruption Which we know, is a we know kind a lot of stealing. Yeah. You get, and it doesn't have to be ordinary corruption of the sort, this appalling sort that happened in, in Brazil and many other Latin countries with this construction firm. That's, that's terrible, and I want to stop it. But there is another corruption, which is the protection corruption. I'm usually the only person in the room who could join, become an apprentice, a beginning electrician in the electrician's union in the state of Michigan in Massachusetts. Why is that? Why? Because my grandfather, my Uncle Joe, and my, Aunt Phil, uh, my Uncle Phil we're all members of the union. You can't. Too bad. Uh, we, and that's, we, that's the bad kind. That's the yeah. state protecting one group of people and hurting the others. I see. So we're finishing, but uh, I, I don't want to finish this without uh, knowing what, are, what, uh, what is your hope? Are you hoping that we are doing a better world? We are constructing I'm, a better world? Or? I'm very optimistic. Are world. you optimistic? Absolutely. Oh. I have a lot of friends, Bob Gordon and lots of others, who are very pessimistic. Based? Based on the history of the last two centuries. Look, here's the number. <clears throat> Income per head in countries that have prospered, including Brazil, from what they were in 1800. Think of Brazil in 1800, very poor. They've increased. Now, hear this figure. It's scientifically true. I'm not making it up. Everyone agrees. Income per head has increased by, hear this, 3,000%. A factor of 30. 3,000%. That raises all boats. And there's no reason at all why that can't continue. And I expect within a couple of generations, China will have the same income as the United States. Within three generations, India will. And Brazil could have the same income as the United States in about one generation. You're not afraid two. of populism or, or I am or afraid of populism, but I think globalization I, I think it's a passing phase. I think we can convince people to be adults and to uh, um, not d not become serfs or children of the state. I I, I think people, you know. If there ever was a time for, for liberalism, it's when people are pretty rich, not as poor as they were, free legally, and fairly well educated compared with their great-great-grandparents. Those are the conditions that make for a liberal ideology. Not screw the poor, I am rich, I don't care about you, but a true Christian liberal ideology. I hope you're right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank it, you, dear. It was a very nice talk. <laughs> Thank you.